Let's, let's now quickly start directly to the FileX implementation because uh, I think it's really more and more easy to understand in a practical way than uh, discussing over a slide. So again, I'm going to switch my screen. So I'm going to share the other screen. In this lab, we will going to create a file system on a RAM. We want to create in, a, in, um, in the RAM uh, for two reasons, basically. The first reason is because uh, the Nucleo is not having on board any SD, SD card holder or is not having any USB connector to attach directly a USB key, for example, but you would need in this case a kind of uh, hardware in the middle. And the other reason is that uh, I told you that uh, when you work with a physical device, you need the low level driver. The RAM disk in this case uh, is the only case that uh, you don't need a low level driver more than the one that is already provided by the library itself. This is because if you think about it, what is a level driver for a RAM file? The low level driver is simply a mem copy because you are going to copy to pass. So to copy your string from your local buffer to the RAM disk, so from RAM to RAM. So the low level driver that is already provided is simply performing a mem copy. We will show later directly in the code what will happen. So let me switch to the cube either. OK, create a new project. So start. This is uh, again uh, the, the, the usual flow. So new STM32 project. OK, again, uh, let's skip the MCU MPU and directly let's go to the uh, board selector. Select again the Nucleo, so H72. Select. Next. Project name, uh, I don't know, RAM disk, for example, RAM underscore disk. Use default location, no need to change anything. Click finish. Installize all peripheral, uh, you can type uh, yes here, even if we are not going to use any peripheral, LED button and so on. We only need the RAM, and we will only use the RAM of this device, of the STM32H7 device. Okay. You can see again on the left on the Project Explorer that the, there is nothing but the core library, uh, the core uh, user file and the driver. So this is uh, still a bare metal uh, project. Let's go again to Alt-O or select component. Again, uh, we need the file X, but after including the operating system. So first of all, let's add the operating system. So Artos, Tradex, Core, so the minimal. And after that, we can pass to the file X. So again, let's include the core again. The level X we can skip because uh, uh, the level X is for the management of the uh, flash. And directly go to file system interface and add the low level driver for the RAM interface. Let's click on OK. Again, another line appeared here on the categories. Select software pack select the Azure RTOS, and you will see here that finally not only the RTOS that we enable, but also the file X enable again, and the file system interface, so the low level driver for the RAM disk. Select all of them. So first tab about the operating system. Again, we are going to use the static memory. And since we are going to use the static memory and since we need a cache buffer to work with the file system, we need also to increase the size of the memory pool. So let's give 
more than one K, so let's give three K, for example. Memory pool for the file X. OK. The file system has been configured. No need to change anything. Let's go now to the file X tab. Here, the only thing that we need to change is the base address of the RAM disk. By default, it's the Axis RAM 1. We need to change to the Axis RAM 2 because the location one is already used for other um, stuff, for other things of the uh, operating system. So let's move to Axiram 2 base, keeping uh, the same default uh, sides, 8K. OK, and that's it. We have, uh, in few click, enabled, added and enabled the Arthos and the file system the file X. Before generating the code, there is only one thing that is mandatory to be done when working with the operating system. We need to change the time base because the system tick is now being used by the operating system. We need to move the time base for the AL from SysTick to a low resolution timer, let's say. So let's go to System Core on the left, click on Sys, and move the time base source from System Tick to timer uh, six, for example. Okay, now we are ready to generate the code. So save everything. A pop up will appear. Do you want to, to generate the code? Click on yes. It will take a while. Again, two libraries will be added. First of all, the operating system library again, and the other one is about the file X. So if we explode the, the middleware, we will see not only the ThreadX source, but also the file X source. But again, never touch the file related to the to the middleware. So you can take a look but do not modify it and the other folder added is the file x open file x open up and you will see here the app underscore file x dot c file even in this case like this morning we are now working no more with a bare metal project but with a, an os based project this means that the main dot c file has no more um, sense to be modified, so you can close it because uh, the while one will be never reached because uh, the execution will never exit the threadix in it. So you can close the main.c and you can open instead the app underscore file x.c file. This is the file that we overwrite. So you can work at file system level outside the QBIDE, deleting this file and adding the other one, or directly change directly the content of this file. This is what I'm going to do. So select all, delete, and now I'm going to copy the content of this file directly, Control c Control v if everything is correct, you should see 268 as number of uh, lines in that, inside this file. Save. And compile. Control B. This will take a while because we are going to compile not only the OS, but also the file X. So this will take a while. You can see on the console how much files are going to be compiled. In the meantime, let's scroll across the, the file and see how it's composed. Um, let's start from the beginning. OK, default sector sites. We are going to use a, a RAM disk file 
8K in size. So uh, 8K with sector size of uh, 512, it means in theory we have 16 sector, but some sector at the beginning are reserved for the file system itself. Sector, let's say sector number one, in sector number one, we will use uh, in the following step the, the, uh, the breakpoint in the code. So we are going to monitor sector by sector what we, what is going to happen. Uh, sector number one is where you can find the uh, information related to the file system itself. Sector number three is the sector where you can find information about uh, files and directories. And then finally, starting sector number five, you will find, uh, let's say, the payload of the of the file, so the content of the file. So only the uh, the odd sector one to five are going to be used for our purpose. We can ignore sector number uh, the, the the even one, so sector number two and sector number four because they are reserved for uh, file system stuff. So the default sector size here is uh, 512 or in X is 0x200. And so later we are going to check the offset 0, the offset 400 and the offset 800. So we will see later. Other stuff, uh, stack size, stack prior, um, uh, thread priority, preemption priority, okay, you manage it. Media memory, for example. Media memory is a pointer to a buffer used for file system as a cache memory. Using a cache memory, it means that you will not notice some uh, change into the RAM disk content exactly when you are going to create a file, write to a file, etc. Uh, because you have a cache memory in the middle. You, you, we will see later what will happen step by step. So you will notice also the behavior due to the uh, buffer in the middle, to the cache in the middle. So file system media RAM disk, OK, file system file, file X, uh, thread X, uh, thread, uh, file X thread. Uh, as I told you this morning for the file system, every component of the file system uh, um, uh, of the thread X and so on has an handler. So every operation on the thread, on the file or the RAM disk has his handler, his pointer. So you can work on it through his pointer. Uh, the thread entry is the content, the function that is going to be executed by our task, is the thread entry task we already used for the LED toggle. Now we are going to change the behavior from a simple LED toggle to the management of the file system. So we are going to, to create a RAM disk, we are going to create a file, open, write, close, and so on. Let's go on. On the file X init, there is the allocation of the thread stack to gain sites and the creation of the thread itself. using again the same parameter we discovered. After that, you have the allocation of the of the cache. So the small buffer, 512, uh, we discussed it before. You have a cache in the middle between what you want to do and the real workflow on the RAM disk, so write and so on. About the thread entry, I will comment only the first line because the other one we will see step by step. So media format, the media format is the function used to create the RAM disk. You will see here the address of the RAM disk. You will see here the famous uh, low level driver. The low level driver, I repeat, is uh, always needed for your device. Whatever device are you going to include? If we go inside it, you will find what I told you before. I need to compile before. Okay, I will come back later. 
here you will find the, the low level driver, meaning the main copy, because we are going to work with a RAM disk. So all the operations are from memory to memory in the end, from RAM to RAM. So the low level driver is a main copy. Other stuff you have here, sides of the cache and a pointer to the cache itself. You have the name of the volume. You will see this name inside the sector number zero. And you will see other other parameter that are already self-explaining. So number of fat, director entry, and so on. Sector sector side. This is important. Is a file under twelve. Once uh, compiled, yes. Let's go in the back again and flash the board and put a breakpoint here. The bug as STM32 application. Keep it the default uh, value, so do not change anything. OK. OK, board has been flashed. Before going in execution, let's add a breakpoint inside our task. So let's add a breakpoint to the FX media format, for example, file line 120. To add a breakpoint, simply double click on it. Let's run. Ah, the breakpoint is disabled here. Why? Let me check. Oh, it's the same. Hmm? Ah, it's skip all back point. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> there, there was a button that was pressed, not by me. Okay. Okay. Now, sorry. Let's uh, let's go back, reset the ship, and redo the the bug. Okay. Now I see. To watch at the content of the of the run disk, let add a memory monitor. So the same operation done by Manuel this morning. So if you don't see the memory browser, go to window, show view, memory. Let's add as a, a address the base of the RAM file, so 0x2402 0000. Okay, uh, let's add a nice rendering model, so click on new rendering and select traditional, double click. Let's go step by step. You will see on the sector number one, so at the offset zero X zero format of the media. So you will see here the name RAM disk. You will see here the file system itself, file X, etc. Now let's scroll the memory monitor and let's go to third sector that is at offset 0, 0 x 400 so let's scroll down okay it's around this zone let's go on step by step we are going to create a file and to open it This is the file at offset 0x400 around. So sector number three, because the sector number two is reserved, same as sector number four. The file is fxtest.txt. 
and after that we are going to write something at address 0 x 8 100 exactly this is the file x working on stm32 so you can see here that everything happened so the first sector is for the file system the third sector is for the file in the directory and starting the fifth sector you will see the payload we can continue step by step but basically what is going to be done is simply reopen the file again go to the beginning on the file and read the content of the file so we can check that the content of the file is exactly the same content included into the run disk and it's exactly the same buffer we used before for the write operation so what we saw is uh, how to add a fat file system and how to include in a quick and in an easy way with a, with a few clicks in the end through the kubemx the filex library is obviously we have done this step through a ram disk because it's uh, quicker and you don't need any special driver but in the end you can repeat with all the media that you want that you like that you want to use and also flash memories lender nor are supported through not only the file x but also thanks to the level x and the aware leveling implemented in software by the library itself